Is Gildrethal in, is that, is that like my full last name? That's like your last, that's the only way I can say your full name. I don't even, yeah, that's the only way I can dispense it. That's become your okay. surname. Your surname is Gildrethal. Okay, well, uh, Mr. Exalted March, I, I do not. What is the, the current hottest game right now? Dragon Age fucking Inquisition. Oh, okay. I, I thought you were going to meme and say like Mario Party or something. What? what? <laughs> um. I agree, Dragon, by the way. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you should, right? But I mean, like, Dragon Age Inquisition is a really, really, really good video game. And I, I that this is the choirist of all choirs that I could be preaching to, <laughs> to say that, is this audience who already knows that and believes that as well. But it had been a minute, and it had been a long minute since I have played completely vanilla, unmodded Inquisition. Mm-hmm. I wanted to play that, you know, as we approach Veilguard, because I want to remind myself what that last Dragon Age product was without any mods, without anything to, you know, make war table missions go automatically or, you know, change the look or anything like that and just play it completely vanilla. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. That is still a good video game. Yeah. That is an outstanding fucking video game. Like not just good, but great and great in an all time kind of way. Um, it's not as though I had forgotten, but maybe I had kind of forgotten the feeling of it. If someone had asked me on paper, I would have said, yeah, it's one of the best RPGs that you can play that has choice and consequence and party base and all these other things. But playing it again, especially vanilla, like I, for some reason, I, that was the part that made me like hesitate the most of like, ugh, Dragon Age with no mods. It's fucking <laughs> great. It's fucking great. The, I think the war table is awesome. I, like honestly, I don't. I honestly don't. I sure some of them were a little bit ridiculous, and maybe the times could have been shorter. Um, but I think the war table missions are great. I think they're. I think that they work. I think so much of Dragon Age Inquisition works so well. Mm-hmm. And I wish that there was something being done, or some sort of push, or some sort of. I really feel like that game needs a next gen update pat, like a quick oh, patch, not yeah. a remaster, just a. It only runs at 30 FPS on the new consoles, which have tons of um, graphics processing overhead that they could run it at 60 easily. Mm-hmm. And they run it at like 900p. It's like not even 1080, it's not even full 1080. It's like if they just did that so it could run at like PC graphics, holy crap, I think there would be so much more interest in that. Uh, people replaying Inquisition on console. I mean, the whole series needs a little bit of a facelift, to be honest, because like, you know, it, it's hard to get Origins working on actually anything right now. The PC uh, version, unless you've got uh, the GOG version, uh, the EA app has just absolutely shat itself. Uh, a lot of people are having problems, especially really? a lot through Steam. Yeah, Steam actually need because uh, uh, in Dragon Age Origins, you, if you buy it on Steam, it does not open through the EA app. But um, so many people have not been able to get Steam uh, Origins to work. And uh, I, don't have it on or- I don't have it on Steam, so I don't know what the deal is. But apparently there's a mod out that you have to put into your game just to get the game to run on Steam. Like, it's it's nuts. <laughs> so I haven't actually, actually tried it in a very long time. So I, I'm going to have to boot it up here in a few minutes, not minutes, but uh, a few weeks to do some video stuff. And I, I am fearful if I'm going to be able to get that to work or not. There, there's so many people complaining. So, oh, that's interesting. I mean, I, I have it through EA, the EA app, and I did install it. There was a part of me that, that sort of contemplated maybe doing an Origins run as well. Um, I decided to just play Inquisition, but um, it opened fine. I mean, it seemed to run fine. Yeah, I, I think for Inquisition, at least, it's um, it's just the mods that's the problem. But like uh, Origins and 2 apparently are having some like people can't. Like the game says they don't own it and stuff like that. And, and not oh, just, that's not and, good. And, and not just Dragon Age. Apparently it's happening with Mass Effect as well. Um, so it, it's just a lot of, I don't know. I've heard nothing but complaints about the EA app. Somehow worse than uh, Origin, the original EA app, whatever. Oh, like dear God. Launcher. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which, which like, we've been here long enough to remember Origin was terrible. So the fact mm-hmm. that it's worse, it's like, oh, oh my God. What? Yeah, well, just, I mean, PSA to everyone who already knows and has already done their own dozen playthroughs. Um, tell your friends, tell your friends to go play Dragon Age Inquisition before Veilguard comes out. Uh, because, I, God, I, I'm honestly, I don't want to say blown away, but like, Dragon Age Inquisition, I feel like, is a game that has gone in reverse. I feel like when it came out, it was heralded. 
no pun intended. Uh, it, it was treated as game of the year winner and like, oh, and I as mean, time has win, gone on, yeah. it won the game of the year. Yeah. And as time has gone on, people kind of go, Oh, I don't know. It was kind of, it had some MMO stuff in it or whatever with the hinterlands. And I feel like its reputation has gotten a little bit worse in the mainstream it as has, time yeah. has gone on. And that is such crap. It is. You know what? You know what really blows my mind? Last thing on inquisition. Mm-hmm. It should take a person reasonably 25 minutes to leave the hinterlands. Like, I don't understand why people complain. I don't even understand why. I I guess maybe they patched it initially, right? They lowered the amount of power that you had to get to leave. Uh, I don't, you know, I didn't play it at launch, so I don't really know. I think maybe that was it. But now you need like four power. You could walk around in the hinterlands for like a half hour and pick up enough power points to leave. Oh yeah, no, it's 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 actually like all you have to do is do two camps and talk to the horse master Dennett, and then like there's one like close a rift, which is part of the tutorial to get a horse, and then, <laughs> and then you're out. And yeah. people still to this day go, "Oh, the hinterlands is so big, and I don't know what Bioware was thinking." And it's like you don't have to play any of that. <laughs> I I'll at least say like that's the. Uh, I, I don't mind it. I, I love Inquisition. I've done multiple 100% runs just for the own enjoyment of it. Mm-hmm. I like collecting the shards. I'm the weirdo. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I I don't get the criticism because I think I'm just not that person. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I will be interested to see like how the next game does side quests because so many people complain about the side quests in inquisition and like for for a part i get it like there is something impersonal about some of the side quests and like some of the rewards especially if you've played like a dozen times and have everything unlocked with the golden nug like it just isn't even worth it Uh, you're just doing it to check off a box which hey i like doing the check off boxes there's a bit of me that likes that as well and like i i like i really like the crafting system in inquisition this is stuff that we've talked Mm -hmm. about for years already but like the fact that there's some of the best equipment in the game is really the crafted stuff. It's like, mm-hmm. I like crafting systems that are like that, um, where you end up making the best stuff yourself. And so I, I don't mind picking up elf root a thousand times. I like it. It, it, I, I liked the crafting inquisition, but at the same time, it completely devalued anything you picked up. So I, it like was a weird, it should have been one or the other, not both in my opinion. Mm. Like, yeah, like, like you take, pick up yeah. recipes and then you then you make it and that's what it is because you pick up you pick up a really cool weapon and go great this looks awesome i can't use it and then you toss it into <laughs> a chest and that's it um especially they, they put in a lot of cool little lore details and some of the unique weapons and like so i would just pick them up and put them in a little chest to like look at them and go oh, aren't they pretty and give them a little pat and like it's that's, that's all they did <laughs> they weren't very good but yeah, after a while so, yeah yeah anyway yeah. Uh, hey, did you? There's a new game coming out. <laughs> Is there now? Really? Yeah, I, I, we, that's what we're supposed to be talking about today. <laughs> you know, it's a good thing that we started a podcast about this franchise seven years ago. <laughs> yeah, <and laughs> right I, on time. Yeah, you know, um, what are you going to say? <laughs> you know uh okay so the, uh, the main thing i want to talk about today is the game informer article uh before we go any further uh there are spoilers to the opening of the game i'm going to say the first hour maybe even a little bit more um it's it's nothing beyond that but if you want to go into this game completely blind you're gonna have to skip this episode i'm sorry you're <laughs> We're just we're just gonna both go into it, and like I'll, I'll try to make sure leading up into um, Veilguard stuff that the the major stuff we won't like reveal an accident except for this episode. Um, I just know that some people are really sensitive to that, um, so I'm very sorry. Uh, I'll see you listening to this episode sometime in the winter, I suppose, <laughs> after you've played the game. <laughs> I I will say this to some of the folks who like to go in completely blind. Sometimes I am that person and this is so subjective, they might hear the thing and feel like I was telling them lies. But as someone who actually does value going in completely blind, a lot of the time when I heard slash read the stuff that, that's been talked about here, the spoilers, mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, it's not really that much. I mean, it's something. If you if you want to be completely blind, don't listen. But as far as the spoilers are concerned, I'm like, yeah, that, I'm, I, that's very early I, in the game. I think I'll be fine. I, I kind of get some of the complaints because like um, it's, 
things that people have been hyping up as mysteries for a long, long time are revealed in like the first couple hours of the game. And like some people want to experience that in a game rather than an article. You know what I mean? Mm, that's true. That's true. I'm not as I'm not as committed to some of the lore elements as others are. Yeah. If you don't really give a shit about the lore, listen, it's fine. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> if if you're if you're into it and you you want to have like be there and have that momentous like he's like, oh, the thing is the thing, then yeah, you're turn away now. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Thanks I for found stopping out by. during a PowerPoint and I, I found out during a PowerPoint. So I get it. <laughs> there they are showing you what they think is like basic information in Katie's whole like you were seeing the matrix unfold before you. There was one thing that someone I can't even say it, but there was something that was confirmed in a PowerPoint to me. It what it wasn't even that. It's like someone just said it offhandedly and I, I had to sit there afterwards and be like, This is not a casual thing you just said. This is like <laughs> we we all kind of know it, but like this, like you can't you can't you can't just start with there. It was it was a very trippy meeting. Let me tell you. Um. Anyway. Uh. So if you remember from the last episode, I said that the gameplay trailer left off right at a moment. Uh. That was. Uh. Like the the next bit of it was super duper hilarious and like yes. fucking funny. Uh, that's actually been revealed in the this article. <laughs> I thought that that's I thought I made that connection as well when I yeah. heard that. Yeah. So let's just go through the article um, and uh, explain myself some more. So uh, I guess a little bit of background of what this article is. So Game Informer, um, Bioware invited one Game Informer journalist called Wesley LeBlanc uh, to go to Bioware. I think there's another guy with him. Uh, I don't. I don't. I'm not quite certain. But um, they went to Bioware and they got to see a bit of the game. Um, for some reason, it was a hands-off demo. So, like, he was sitting in the room, but he didn't actually hold the controller. The, the devs hold the controller and can they, like, you know, we're picking stuff together and, you know, roll the character together and, like, we're jumping through different sections to, like, show off the game. Um, I'm going to already say that I don't know why. <laughs> That was the case. Apparently, a lot. Apparently, all the the demos they've done is hands off demos um, for the journalists. And uh, Wesley went on a Game Informer podcast to say, like he like he wasn't really into Dragon Age, but the game looked really promising, and he's like really interested in it. And the only like red flag that he saw was that it was not a hands on demo. Um, I did have some people ask if I had a hands on demo. I did. I had a hands on demo for like three days. I I don't know why. It, it, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's, I, I mean, here's my unsolicited opinion to all, all game publishers, not just EA, not just for this instance. Just don't do that because every game journalist is going to react the exact same way with a little bit of suspicion. So just you're better off just letting them have their hands on. Yeah, I I got I got I don't, I don't, I'm not in touch with the marketing. So. I, I don't know. Okay, anyway, so we're we're going off of his word and what he saw. So um, a lot of it is kind of stuff that, I don't know, we, we've heard a lot of previously. And I think the, the biggest stuff was um, they kind of revealed what the hub is going to be for your game. So kind of like the Sky, the, this game's version of Skyhold. And then a little bit more details of what happens after the gameplay trailer. So where, where would you like to start? Do you want to start with uh, what happens after the gameplay trailer or talking about the hub? Or uh, I am so about the lighthouse. So it, if you're giving me a All choice, right. I, I'm, I'm about this fucking lighthouse. <laughs> okay. So yeah, after uh, I forget. Oh man, I'm in a dangerous situation because I don't know where the article talks about. How does it, how does it word it? After encounter with Solus, Rook wakes up with Harding and Nev in the the white ha- the lighthouse. Yeah, so why why don't you tell me what's so cool about the lighthouse to you? Uh, I mean, just in general. I mean, this is going to sound weird because I'm going to start talking about um, Skyhold again or Inquisition again. But this is something <laughs> that this is something that I've been saying that I wanted in you know, Dragon Age Four, quote unquote, for the entire time. I wasn't sure if they would keep that element of base building. Mm-hmm. Um, so really, it's just the fact that. Skyhold, when I say, I know there were people who were like, we like Skyhold, but the customization wasn't enough or it wasn't enough of this or it wasn't enough of that. It was enough for me. So like, they're going to have a hard time disappointing me with the lighthouse. I just love it when an RPG has a home base. Mm -hmm. Like if they give it to me, I'm happy. 
And then everything else about it is like gravy to me. I just want that space to be there and I want it to be at least mildly customizable. Yeah. No, the I granted like it it appeals to me in a way that was like they they like went the <laughs> They didn't actually do this, but it does feel like they went up to me like, Katie, what would your ideal base be? And then I just ramble on for a few minutes and go, great, that's exactly what it is. Oh, so- <laughs> that's awesome. That's amazing. So when they were like pitching it to us, eventually we saw it. I'm like, this is this is perfect. I no notes. I love this. I'm so into this. This is exactly what I ever wanted. I'm so fucking excited for people to see it. And yeah, I there's 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 so much there that I thought was so cool and I can't even uh, say anything other than what what it talks about. I know it, it did confirm that uh, the lighthouse. What it's not an actual lighthouse. It's not literally like you're on the side of an ocean. Um, it's in the crossroads, and it's uh, just its own. <clears throat> the 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 way the article talks about like well, it's in the fade. Okay, I'm just gonna be. I don't. I don't <laughs> think it's spoilers. I'm gonna be the Lord nerd. It's it's like a bubble in the crossroads, kind of like what Morgan brings you to. Sure. When, it's kind of like that. Um, it's its own little bubble. It's it's not actually the crossroads. It's like its own little bubble of reality. Um, so uh, it's, well, I mean, the, the crossroads is the bubble of reality, whatever. Uh, so that it's kind of like that. It's not really in the fade, but it kind of is, but it's kind of it's, not. It's, it's in weird, between though. the fade and, mm. and the, the uh, terrestrial world, if you will. So, yeah. So it's in, it's so cool. I loved it so much. <laughs> I'm so excited to like get to see like everything finished with that. Um, it's it's very comfy, and I, yeah, it it did, did used to belong to Solus, um, and you as you walk around there, you will see like stuff that like has kind of shown that what Solus mm-hmm. has been up to for the past couple of years. Um, one thing that they put in the article was that you see a table with one lonely table setting at a very large table and it's yeah. kind of depressing and a little bit funny. Um, and that's like, a great touch, honestly. Yeah, no. And there's like a lot of little stuff like that. Um, it's, they, they say in the, the article, it like looks gaudy and stuff and like it does it, it, in like an ancient elven way. If I should say, it's not like you're going to grandma's house and it has like that 2005 Tuscany kitchen feel. Um, but... we know Solus. We know Solus likes a good fresco. <laughs> yes, there are. There are. Oh my god, there's so much. Um, it, but uh, it's 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 kind of like sad too because it's a little bit like ancient elven bachelor pad that has been too busy to really keep up with it. And um, I'm excited to see what they do with it and if it like if the lighthouse has its own story, I, I generally don't know. And I, w- I would love that they, they explored that more of being able to like refurbish it a little. I'm, cause, Cause it kind of sounds like it could be, I don't know. Um, so that's, that's my hopes. But yeah, I, it's, it's a, it's a great hub. It might be my favorite. I, and I love Skyhold to death to, to be fair. The hubs are a camp in origins, which I, I it was, it's like, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. The house in Dragon Age 2, which I think is a lot of missed potential. Skyhold, which is great. And then this one, which <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, but I, I think it's the coolest hub by far. I don't know. I mean, I assume this is the case, but I don't know if they say it directly in the article. But because mm-hmm. of its position in, in between the fade, it is accessible I'm, t- I'm talking about like for obviously it's accessible instantly from a gameplay standpoint but i mean like in the world the idea is that the party can instantly access it yes um i have an answer <laughs> okay 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 okay, okay. say no more say no more say no more gotcha 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 i'm over here yeah. asking questions that are that are protected oh you know what hold on sorry i just saw i just saw a bit in the article uh so the article says uh with our next move decided we head to solace's alluvian to return to arlathan forest so there's a special alluvian uh solace's alluvian okay okay cool yeah yeah that's that's my answer it's sick right. though it's sick <laughs> it's sick okay yeah all right all right i like that answer yeah yeah um, so let's, let's go then on what happens after the gameplay demo. Um, yes. so the gameplay demo. And so, yeah, last time I was like uh, saying the gameplay, like, oh, it's so funny, but it's not the tone that's funny. And I saw a lot of people talking like, what the fuck does she even mean? Uh, 
it revealed it here. What the fuck? I mean, Solus gets his ass trapped in the fade. And <laughs> <laughs> Solus gets stuck. He's That's stuck. really the best. He is stuck. And he, he essentially gets trapped in the prison he was trying to build for um, uh, the what we what we have found out is the Evanuris, Gilanon, and uh, Elgrinon. Um, which is that's the other big deal. That's the other big spoiler that the two old gods, Moonhead and Beetle, as the, the lore circles yes. have been saying, <laughs> are uh, Gilanon and Elgrinon. Um, which <laughs> I I know I've known the answer for a while, and that's on me. But so much like being on the other side of the puzzle and being in the know, and then seeing them throw softballs at you and you guys whiffing it sometimes is really frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the, um, the, there was a trailer that came out with, uh, like it was like the motion comic or what, not really a comic motion graphic with uh, talking about like who Solus is. And it had the, um, all the elven, uh, heads in like in a, in a little survey circle and there was one big one and that was beetle and i'm like oh yes finally people will connect the big circle with the main guy elgernon because that's who it actually is and a lot of people did not say that and i was like how <laughs> <laughs> it's right there and i think i even said that in the video because it's like I did know at the time I did, but it was also just like how guys, it's right there. It's the big one. Why would why would Fallon didn't be the big one? Fallon was connected in origin. I was losing my mind, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was losing my mind. And it was funny seeing people. There was one person I talked to. I'm not I'm not gonna name them, but there's one person I talked to. They the, at, at first blush, like, oh, it's probably this. And I'm like, and inside, I'm like, yes, you got it. You got it. You're you're so good. And then they just overthought it and went like 180 degrees the other direction to the wrong answer. I'm like, no, you had it the first time. <laughs> you overthought it. <laughs> I wonder, I mean, if this is how you feel, imagine how Bioware feels. Or maybe they're just not that connected to what people are theorizing, but I'm sure somebody at Bioware is. I don't. I actually don't know what they say. You, you know, I don't know what they think. They because uh, like they they did ask me questions on what I thought, and I would say things, and they would just kind of like nod politely. And I wonder how much I embarrass myself or not. Um, so I mean, that. if the bread cr- if the breadcrumbs exist, it's because someone thought they would be followed, right? So like someone did yeah. that in Bioware knowingly. Yeah. So it's it's funny being on the other side of it. Now I I will say like for the most part I'm now caught up, or people are caught up with me. I, I do know a little bit more after the article, uh, actually a, a decent amount, but like, um, yeah, we all, I'm all on the mystery chain with you guys. Now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Liz gets trapped and then he, I don't think they explain it well in the article. What happens like lore wise of like how this connection between Solus and Rook one works and then two, like how it's done. Um, and I'm hesitant to explain it. <laughs> so okay. I, I I will say, like, if the article you're sitting there and you're thinking, ah, this doesn't quite make sense, I um I actually peppered them with a bunch of questions. Cause uh the uh first time we played, I think it was a little unclear. And I I'm still kind of embarrassed about it, but um we played the, the first time we played, we played one day and then uh, I went to bed. I stayed up to three in the morning, writing down just all the questions I had. And I trapped the next morning. I trapped Epler and uh, Corinne Bush in a room saying, like, I'm sorry. These are all of my questions that I have and I can't get them out of my head. Please sit down and let me like throw them at your face. And <laughs> I just I just kept asking all these questions and things that were unclear. And like to their credit, the next time I played, a lot of them were answered, you know, and, like maybe like they were already thinking about doing that and that was completely unneeded that's why i feel embarrassed about it but like (laughs) no that actually sounds like exactly what other hardcore fans of the game would want to have happen honestly yeah they they were all very polite to me i always feel really awkward doing like lore stuff in like face-to-face real life because to me it's just like a silly thing you do um but then they like (laughs) paid me to go up there and like I, i i didn't there, there was a very weird moment where I'm sitting there like they're, you're, they're paying me to be up there and like give feedback. 
Do they want me to give lore feedback or just general feedback? Where's the line? And like, I know they're not giving me all the details. So like, I'm going to be in the dark. How do I respond to that? How do I? <laughs> so it was so mm-hmm. very weird. And I, I just kind of came to the conclusion of like, I'm just going to not shut up and they're going to have to deal with that. And I'm so sorry. And I'm just going to have to be embarrassed about this for my life. So. It sounds like you were doing God's work, honestly, in the most frank, like practical sense possible. The fact that you gave feedback and then saw it implemented in a way that would satisfy you probably means that you've done a thing that helped uh, that ultimately ends up helping a lot of people who are going to play the game. That's my impression of it. I hope so. And and I also don't want to minimize that. Like there was probably stuff that they thought about that they just hadn't implemented yet. So I don't want to like take credit on a lot of stuff because maybe that was already in the works. Um, And then, but you don't know what you don't know. So I think you took the right approach, which is to just say everything. (laughs) Yeah. And I, I, I just do feel bad, like trapping them in a room and being like, uh, I have, I actually still have it cause I kept it. It was like, um, one of those like hotel notepads that are like, you know, decently long and just front and back, just all questions nice. <laughs> in the nice. small font. And I'm just like, what about, what about, what about, um, so yeah. And from that, I have a better understanding of this link. And I, I do think the explanation given is, 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 is good. And like, is satisfying to me. So if like, if, if you're kind of confused on this, they're just not explaining it well to in the article. Um, and I do think they give a better reason, um, in the game. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I, so, okay. So I have a thought on this and you're, yes. you, I think maybe you've already answered it by saying that it's just explained better or differently, mm-hmm. I guess, as far as, I, I guess I don't know what you mean by explain better, and I know you may can't go into it, but like as far as like why how do I put this? Why rook? Why rook is is the thing that I'm going towards, but like I'm not as concerned with like I guess the technicality of how it works. Let, let me let me be more direct. They keep saying over and over again, it's not a chosen one story. Rook is choosing to be here, et cetera, et cetera. They've said that enough that it's, a, it, to me, it's a talking point, right? Like they, they say it as though it's like a selling point or something. Mm-hmm. And to me, I'm like, what exactly is the problem with the chosen one story? Is that it, is it that it's unrealistic? Because <laughs> science fiction and fantasy is inherently unrealistic, so I don't care. Uh, and so when I read this part, I'm just like, so Rook is hooked in. And that's fine. Like, I have no problem. I have no problem with a good chosen one story. Mm-hmm. You didn't choose. The- I like the hook of the Inquisitor. I like the hook of all the way back to Baldur's Gate. Mm-hmm. I like it when the main character didn't choose this and has to deal with just being that person. And I'm fine with the opposite too. But they keep they kept saying it and saying it and saying it. And then when I read that in the article, I'm like, it is a good chosen one story. <laughs> Okay, Jordan, you bring up on a topic that I completely agree with. I don't know what the fuck they're on, dude. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) If I get in trouble for saying this, Sophia, I don't know why they're trying to market this as he's not a chosen one. He's he's there because who the fuck cares if he? I'm gonna. I'll I'll be the first to say. Was was he? Or I say he because the the gameplay trailer was the demo. demo, But like, yeah, like. Rook, Rook, maybe maybe he wasn't chosen. He was just, but he's he's kind of. He was. He just happened to be there. But now now there is a connection there. Like he can't just leave. Like he has that strange soulless connection that nobody else has. Like he, right, he could fuck off. That's true. Like, yeah. um, they just don't want to. I suppose. And I guess like if if your Rook wants to, then you just shut off the game and say see ya. <laughs> but, you win. Like, That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> But like, yeah, I don't know why on the marketing they're like, oh, he's not a chosen one. He's like, who cares? Maybe I want to be the chosen one. I, I, I think what they're doing is that they saw the complaints of Inquisition and they're really trying to address that. And one of the biggest things, um, there's been like, so the first time that we were allowed to like talk about all of this um, was uh, we were allowed to say that we uh, were a part of it and that there was no microtransactions. <laughs> I don't know why only those two things. And then later uh, when they're like, oh, okay, now you can talk a little bit more about the gameplay and like the stuff that we did. They also say, and then also say it's not open world. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. I just, I like, they, they 
I think they they saw the complaints of Inquisition and they're really trying to address mm-hmm. that. And in in a weird way, I don't know why they're so firm on I don't even think that was one of Inquisition's like bad things. Like, okay, yeah, so the Inquisition is the Inquisitor because they have a strange mark on their hand and some people didn't like that. Fuck. Uh... <laughs> I like here's the thing. I could see mm-hmm. someone making the Baldur's Gate criticism. Again, personally, I eat up that chosen one crap with a spoon because mm-hmm. I think that thematically, I don't care about how plausible it is. It, once you're in fantasy and science fiction, saying the word unrealistic as a complaint, just it loses a lot of punch for me, right? Mm-hmm. Thematically, chosen one stories to me make sense because the analog to that in the real world, the sort of thread that you pull out of that thematically is that in real life, you have to step up and do shit that you didn't choose. Yeah. That's what a chosen one story is all about. You're the youngest person in the family and some shit goes down in your family, but you're the one everyone's counting on. Some shit blows up at your job and it shouldn't be you. It should be someone more qualified than you, but you're the one in that chair and you save the day, right? That's what the, that's what the theme, that's what the extractable theme of the chosen one story is for. And so it's not about aggrandizing special people. It, when properly done, it's about showing the fact that I said this once in a video about Mass Effect Andromeda that uh, heroes aren't born. A hero is what happens when a person makes the necessary sacrifices to inhabit the role of hero at the time. To me, that's what the chosen one motif is, except it is kind of forced on the person a little bit. Well, I guess I had a question real quick. I I am not the best video game historian. I don't play that many games. Is there a video game RPG where you're not the chosen one? Oh, there has to be. I mean, yeah, sure, there's like, some. But, like, name one. I'm, I'm struggling. <laughs> I get nervous to test her. I'm on the spot now. <laughs> I, I'm sure. Because, um, like, all the RPGs I've ever played, yeah, you're the chosen one. Fuck it. Sorry. You know, deal with I it. Mean, I, I guess it. I guess at a certain point, we have to start deciding whether or not chosen one means selected by a higher power or, like, a magical destiny. Or that's if chosen one truly just means your group pushed you forward. That's true. Because, yeah, there's there's different variations of the chosen one. Because in, in this particular one, uh, in this this game, uh, Rook was just at the wrong place at the wrong time, or right place at the right time, depending on why you look at it and how you like Solus, I suppose. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it, and it could have been anyone in that scene. That's kind of the what they're trying yeah. to say is the point. Um, but I would argue you could say that about the Inquisitor too. The Inquisitor could have been anybody. They just happened to bust into the the room at the right time, right, whatever. I would even argue that Hawk is a chosen one because no matter what they do, they are successful, weirdly enough. They're the only one in their family to survive all this bullshit, um, mm. depending on your choices. That's And, and like the Warden, they're kind of chosen one too because they survived, you know? In some sense, yeah. So, like, that's interesting when you talk about the other games. I I think Inquisition handles it amazingly well. I, I wish that in some sense they weren't carrying this messaging out there. I kind of wish they would stop with the it's not a chosen one story talking point because Inquisition did it exactly right. Because as the Inquisitor, you keep getting to say, no, I'm not. Yes. That That to me is the most important thing. Like... That character, the Inquisitor, cannot control the fact that some people hate them for being called the Herald of Andraste. Mm-hmm. They can't control the fact that some people are like wanting to worship them. And some people are like, you are, you are Andraste's chosen one. You just are. You can say, no, I'm not. You can say, I don't even believe in any of that crap. I'm not Andrastean. Or you can say, yeah, I think I am Andraste's chosen one. And that player agency, to me, is really important. But I love the fact that it's not in your control as the player. You may be the chosen one. You may not be. And you don't actually know. I don't really think that the game, the game never says in a definitive way, yes, you are. It's mm-hmm. just that people are saying you are and you have to deal with that. Yeah. And, you know, it's up to you as a player to be, like to believe if there is a maker in this world that did chose you or no, you were just like the random place at the random time and happened to be the Inquisitor now. You know, like I, I, I agree with that. Yeah, no, I, I love that about Inquisition, and I, 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 I don't know why they're going so hard over this. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, ultimately, and it's not even, it's not a criticism of what they have shown us about the game. It's more my little nitpick of how they're choosing to discuss it in marketing. 
the, the fact that Rook favorite. is the fact that Rook is hooked in some way to Solo, I, I think that's a good thing. I think it's great. Which it's great. I love that actually. The 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 Solus thing. I, I, I've seen a lot of people have hopes for like what Solus's character would be in like interacting with Rook, and like I'm not going to confirm any of them, but there's so many people. People know Solus's character. It's it's a good time. It's a good time. Um, I actually have another nitpick on the marketing and uh, 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 the talking points they're doing. Yeah. Um, they on the gameplay because they really they're really trying to sell people on the gameplay. Uh, my pitch, just real quick, my pitch on. Uh, try the gameplay out like they tried to do what you would think of a dragon age game with a little bit more tactical and it's like this weird half and half arpg tactical stuff in inquisition and i don't think it worked because frostbite couldn't handle it what this currently is going to be is what frostbite can handle and i i, I think it's good i think it's fun there there is some thinking involved it's not like which i would even argue a lot of arpgs have thinking involved you know um but like they keep trying to say the word tactical. Like it's tactical gameplay. It's tactical. I'm like, when you say you're not wrong, Corinne, you are not wrong. You do use tactical thinking. The problem is, is that the gamers, the gamer boys have a, a thoughts of a gameplay in mind. When you say tactical gameplay, mm. you know, you think of the CRPGs, the boulder skate, a little bit of, yeah. you know, you know, dragon. And it's not that it's really not. So I, I don't know why they keep trying to harp on like it, it it's just a little bit confusing language in my mind. Like we see that we see we see the screenshots, we've seen the gameplay. You you like you you can absolutely say like, oh yeah, you know, there's 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 strategy and I wish that, yeah, like use strategy. That's a whole different other thing. There's strategy involved that you have to do whatever, but I, I do wish they would just stop using the word tactical because I think it, it makes them sound like they're trying to do a little smoke and mirrors of like, well, of course it's a tactical game. It's Dragon Age. Like, well, it's it, it's it is different though. That being said, all the Dragon Ages are different. None of the Dragon Ages play these. Same. Right, right. <laughs> I've known for ten years that this game. Not even before I even did any of this. I I well, before, as soon as Trespasser rolled credits, I'm th- I'm sitting there thinking, I can't wait to see what the next Dragon Age game is about because it's not going to be anything like these others because none of these other games have linked together. And so far, I have proven 100% right. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, totally. So I wish I so wish they would just stop using tactical and then just start saying strategy or something. And maybe they have somewhere. But yeah, I don't understand the marketing talking points to this game. Um, you know, I, I it does confuse me at some point. I mean, I, you know, maybe I'm not supposed to be saying these things, but they, they haven't told me anything. So what am I? going to say <laughs> i mean they're, they're trying to please they're trying to please a certain segment of the audience that maybe wants to hear more about tactics and, and and i'm in i'm in that section of the audience but i'm with you on this i don't think that the actual gameplay is going to deliver anything that is a tactics focused it's not going to be satisfied in a tactics focused kind of way mm-hmm. and that's okay it's going to be something different yeah, so they they um so along with this like big main article that's in like the published magazine Game Informer and you can read it online, which is how we're doing it. Um, the guy has been posting out many articles that's come out for a couple of weeks. One of them has been focused around gameplay and kind of describing what that's like. And I I feel like I see them the most often talked about thing is that you only really get when when you, when you look at the HUD, you get three abilities that mm-hmm. you can can pick out. And those are like your big bad boy abilities. But, and a lot of people are saying, well, for, you know, for a mage, like that's only three spells. That's nuts. And I'm like, okay, it, that's fair. Especially if you're coming off of Origins when you could have like, goddamn, all of all of the abilities, at least 30. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just an mm-hmm. absurd amount of abilities. Um, I, I get where you're coming from. But I, I like, it's, it's not where you just like you press auto attack and your character starts attacking. Like you have to attack certain spots. You have to, um, you know, roll and dodge and parry. And then you can actually like, depending on your class, you can change how you do all of those actions. There's like a dash forward and stuff like that. Um, each class has like a ranged ability. So if you're um, a warrior, you can throw your shield and boomerang it back. Um, Mage has a close attack option. Um, if you're, if you're playing row, you can either choose long range bow, close range daggers, you know, stuff like that. 
Um, and so like there's, you, you, there's a lot of customization on that. And so you, you get the skills, but then like, there's also this other stuff that could be customized. And then like your companions have all of that customized too, along with their three skills. Um, and then like, I don't know, personally, I thought your companions abilities rather than at least how I played the other dragon age. Um, I would set my companion skills and then I would forget about them for the rest of the game. Wouldn't even use the tactical menu. Fuck it. Who cared? <laughs> um, maybe origins had the most where that actually mattered, but the other two games, unless you were playing like super hard card mode, you could you could sneeze and nobody, nobody cared. <laughs> I don't really care what the companions are doing as long as they're alive. Um, <laughs> Um, and in this game, I felt like I used the companions more because they're kind of an extension to you. So I, I know that it's not technically what maybe they, they want to focus on. But when I was playing, I felt more like the companions were also on my skill bar. <laughs> you know? mm, yeah, so, I think that's what it's meant to be. Yeah. yeah, it's like, OK, yeah, you get three, but then you open up the skill bar and then there's six more abilities. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's basically it. You have nine, basically. So, you have nine yeah, abilities. Yeah. So it, it kind of felt like that. Um, and, and that's how it felt like to me, you know? And uh, I, I, you know, everyone everyone that I talked to on the council really liked the gameplay. You know, we, we, they were all into it. We None of us had any complaints about, like, how they were doing the gameplay. We all thought it was solid. Um so like a lot of people worried about that like it, if this just isn't your type of game that's fine like i totally get where you're coming from like i would never enjoy excuse me i would never enjoy any like gun game i like i don't like any of the mass effect gameplays i think it's kind of boring i still play them because i like the, the rpg element of it yeah but like i i, I see a gun and i fall asleep but <laughs> <laughs> The only reason Anthem got a pass because I got to fly around and do bullshit as the storm. <laughs> There's flamethrowers in it. Yeah, no, um, really. Um, so like I I guess that's my my harp on the gameplay that like it's I I feel like they they know that people are gonna freak out about the gameplay and they try to minimize the damage. And I feel like it's it's when you look at a kid when you say, No, don't freak out, and they're immediately gonna freak out. Right. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, also, I mean, that's very true. I think it's one of those things where it's like, and I say this to someone who has been saying for the longest time how much I love the tactics aspect of this franchise. Mm -hmm. The sooner you let it go, the sooner you're going to be able to enjoy what the thing is. Because it's not going to be that. It's like mm -hmm. if you are if you wanted to go to a Chinese restaurant and all your friends decided we're going to go get barbecue, like don't be that person who talks about the Chinese restaurant the entire time you're eating barbecue. Like just enjoy the barbecue, man. Like I know we all love it, but you know, there's a part of me that the more I see it, the more I watch it, I'm just trying to, you know, get myself geared up to be excited for it because it's not as though I don't enjoy real time combat games. Mm -hmm. I do a whole lot. And so hopefully this will be a really fun one. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I, I'm looking forward to really get in there and play with it. Um, the skill tree looks a lot like the, um... did you ever play final fantasy 10? I don't think you did. Mm, no. Yeah, they, they, they have some pictures of it out now, and it looks like the sphere grid. Um, a little less complicated than the sphere grid, because the sphere grid was like fucking nuts, dude, if you ever played Final Fantasy X. Um, mm. But, um, yeah, it, it's very sphere grid adjacent, and, like, when you... they Something that they try to tell us, and I think they... I think on... Was it the Discord Q&A? They're like, yeah, we want to make sure that... Every single time you upgrade something, it feels like a significant upgrade. And at least when we played, uh, I will I will say, like, one reason I don't talk a lot about the gameplay and, like, pros and cons and stuff is that they got me in the chair and I'm like, I'm here for the story. Let's fucking go. I, <laughs> I did not change my equipment out until I just kept dying. Like, why do I keep dying? And Jay's like, did you change your equipment? And I was in starting gear. It was bad. <laughs> um... It was really bad. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's why I'm dying. <laughs> hey, speaking um, of dying, um, <laughs> they have talked about the difficulty mode. Have oh, they not? Yes, they did. Tell people about the, what, 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 <laughs> what's been going on with this difficulty mode conversation. I heard, so, I heard some folks were displeased. <laughs> okay, so uh, there, we, we played a working version where... Like my experience isn't going to fucking matter because it wasn't implemented yet. However, what they told us and what is it, what they were um, what they've gone out with. 
So um, they have a whole bunch of di- different difficulty settings, um, including, uh, you know, like, you, you know, your easy, your hard, your normal, your nightmare. Um, and what everyone's getting upset about for whatever reason is that if you picked anything, uh, except for nightmare, nightmare won't let you do this, but, um, if you pick any of these, these game modes, you can ad- have a lot of adjustments and they're, they're calling it a disability feature with that. That's fair. I get like, they, they told us why they would do this, um, where you can turn off the ability to die in game. So you, you don't die. Um, you know, you, you, your, your health gets low, but and like your the screen's all red and whatever, I, at least I'm assuming it works the same how it worked for us. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so, um, and uh, you, uh, yeah, people are upset that like, well, what's the point of even playing a game if you can't die, you know? And uh, so one of, um, I don't know if she was even talking about Dragon Age or she was just talking about something. Else. No, actually, I think it was about Elden Ring. Pause and Elven Elden Ring. Um, Alana Pierce, I think is her name. Oh, uh, this this weird thing that happened on Twitter with Alana Pierce saying that Elden Ring should be able to pause. And people, I don't know why people fight about this stuff. I really don't. Yeah, I don't know why, like, there's some integrity to gaming that that's, like, an offense to God. But, like, I, I would have thought that this poor woman, uh, like, you know, just, like, spat on Jesus by the way people <laughs> are talking about this. It's like, God, calm down. It, I don't know. I, I, I guess how I see it in, in, like, their thing is, like, sometimes people just want to play a game and not have to fucking deal with it. And like, especially sure. in recent years and especially how I play, sometimes I just want to see what goes on in the story. Sometimes things are just really frustrating in a game, like the um, Dragon Age Origins fight with the stupid, um, it's in brood the deep mother. road. Not, no, the Broodmother. I don't care about the Broodmother. It's actually in the same section, though, where you, you go to the Anvil of the Void and then there's that God forsaken, like little dwarven turnaround thing where it spits out a spirit and you have to defeat the little spirit and you have to click on the anvil to make it shoot a <laughs> vial of blood into the face and you have to do it twice for each very head and it fucking sucks it fucking sucks <laughs> and it, it's just annoying <laughs> and i don't want to deal with it i don't want to yeah. deal with it i just had a bad day things are going bad i don't want to deal with it and yeah, why not just have a, a mode where you don't have to die? It's fine. I don't I don't understand the hate for it. It's like it honestly like it's just if you want to have your it they just have a lot of customization options so you can kind of make your own difficulty. And like you've done that yourself. You went into Andromeda and like made your own little difficulty settings that you really love. And like people are complaining yes. that you can make it easier, but you can make it harder too, dude. Like you don't right. it goes the other way. <laughs> Yeah, they had the things in Inquisition, like the, uh, I forget what they're called, like trials. the challenges, the trials, there you go, um, for toggles as well. I I think this is weird that people argue about. Now, I will say this. I like hard games. I'm not a Demon Souls, Dark Souls, like from software person, but I have beaten Demon Souls, mm-hmm. um, which is a very rewarding experience. And for, from people who are hardcore in that series, they tell me that they've actually gotten slightly easier. Some people say Demon Souls the original is still the hardest one, mm-hmm. at least that it's harder than all the Dark Souls. And I um, I went pretty deep into Elden Ring, but I didn't feel compelled to like go through all the way to the final boss. Mm-hmm. Not because of the difficulty, but just because, to be honest, even though the background lore is kind of interesting, I don't find the world and the story as interesting, right? Yeah. But I really like hard freaking games. And I'll just be honest, I do not think Elden Ring should have a pause. I really don't. I think they should make those games harder. I think they should be soul crushing experiences that are just like (laughs) torture. I think like, seriously, like that's what they are. I think they should make them harder. And I think the people who complain about them being unforgiving and hard, it's like too bad. That's the world's hottest burger. Okay. And hamburgers don't have to be spicy, but if a restaurant makes one and the whole get up, the whole shtick is this is the world's hottest burger. Mm -hmm. You don't go into that restaurant and ask them to make, a less spicy version of the world's hottest hamburger. Mm-hmm. That's ridiculous. It's not ridiculous to say, I only like a little bit of spice in my food. That's not ridiculous. But if a, if a thing is known for being that, you can't in good faith ask them to tone it down. So, so like all the From Software stuff, I think it's a different category. I think they should make those games harder. I think they should just lean 100% into that. But everything else is not supposed to be the world's hottest burger. 
it's supposed to be a normal thing where you can ask them to do a spice level. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it should have difficulty levels. It's going to have a nightmare mode, right? In Veil Guard. Um, I appreciate that. I hope that they have something like Trials as well. I've beaten all of the Dragon Age games on the hardest difficulty level. I mm-hmm. hope Nightmare is very hard on Veil Guard. Mm-hmm. And easy mode should exist. It, like, just don't play it if you don't like easy games. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was actually talking about this with my husband, and he basically had the same opinion as you did. Where the he didn't say it the right the same way, but yeah, the, the spicy burger you don't go in and order the spicy burger and complain that it's spicy. So like, I I get that. I I guess I'm of the opinion of like that's totally fine. But like, I I also feel like Alana wasn't saying like you know from software you're terrible people you gotta you know add a pause. But she's saying like it'd be nicer if it had a pause button. And like yeah, I agree with it. Yeah, it would be nicer if it had a pause button. But I also get like I don't know the 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 outrage people are like oh how dare you just not a real I don't I think that's weird whatever but yeah um with uh with Dragon Age like yeah it's always had different modes of like easy and stuff like that and yeah no Dragon Age Origins easy mode is still like pretty challenging I get that um but like there has been mods since the dawn of time the dawn of Dragon Age where you you make it basically a story mode a bunch of other games. Drag, drag, uh, Bioware games have story modes. I, I believe um, didn't Andromeda have a story mode where it was like it was it was hard to die on Andromeda if you played the story mode. I can't remember. I th- there's one of the Mass Effects I swear has a story mode. And I thought it was Andromeda because I play I, when I was first playing when I first play through a game I like doing it the easy mode so I can kind of like because I know I'm going to be so into the story I'm going to forget the game mechanics, which mm-hmm. happens quite a lot. So I, I like to play it on the easy mode first and then we'll 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 get up in difficulty. So I believe I did that versus Andromeda. Um, so yeah, I I think it's fine for Dragon Age. I don't. Dragon Age has never had the hardest difficulty out there. Like they're not Souls games. Mm-hmm. Yes, the hardest um, difficulty of Origins is pretty difficult. Dragon Age Two is difficult because of the stupid middle of the fight, more enemies spawn in things. Ugh, yeah. And Inquisition is pretty objectively, I'd say, the least difficult. Of the three, although yes. although the highest one is tough. If you turn Trials on, it can get tough. Um, it, it's not a part of what Dragon Age is really, except for there should be a hardest difficulty level that that's pretty challenging. And it sounds like it's going to have that. So no controversy, right? No reason to argue except <laughs> guys on the internet will find a reason to fight about it. I don't, I don't know. It is. I like the, I, I do think Dragon Age shines in its story and its companions and like, and it, it like how you relate to those stories via your character and his choices. I think that is what a real Dragon Age game and it, like the gameplay is always kind of been secondary in my mind. And I think like the hardcore Dragon Age fans, that's usually what it is. Um, and there, there are people that really loved origins and like, they really love the gameplay and they're always disappointed at every single, you know, secondary Dragon Age game that doesn't have that. And, like I, I get you're disappointed and you really like that origins gameplay and there just hasn't been that since. I, I don't want to like poo poo those people. Um, at the same time, like it has been, th- this will be the third game now of Dragon Age not being anything, y- y- you know. <laughs> has it been that Dragon Age Origins gameplay? I don't know what you expected. <laughs> like, yeah, well, you know? I don't. I mildly disagree with that. Okay, to be on, to be honest, like I like Inquisition's gameplay quite a bit. I know, I know that's maybe I'm in no man's land with that one because the hardcore tactics people don't like it and it's not it's not appropriate real time. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, like even though a lot of the tactics is stripped out, if I can go into tactical mode, mm-hmm. tell Blackwall to move to a spot and hold, and like do ch- I really feel like some of those encounters are built around the idea of there being choke points. Like there's stairs that the melee enemies can't get up if you put a warrior there, and then you put your mages and your rogues on the back line and then that drastically changes the fight because you control the choke point and you put ranged attackers on the back and i'm like okay i'm happy i am satisfied i did a tactics thing <laughs> and i am happy now because it worked and so i i don't know i like inquisition from that standpoint well, i i guess that's that's maybe one thing of the beauty of dragon age is like i i totally see what you're saying i just do not interact with the game in that way and I get away yeah, with it. Yeah, it still works. And yeah. it still works. Yeah. For either approach, it still works. Yeah, I how I have always played any dra- and like I like I have streamed it, you can see I'm pl- always playing a mage 
and I come there guns of blazing and I just <laughs> go up to the sky and go, ah, and shit rains down. <laughs> yes. And I just hope the mate, like the, the melee people, you know, will get it before I die. And yeah. I, that's just what I do. <laughs> There's no thoughts head empty. Things are exploding. And that's yeah. how I do my games. Um, but like you do have room for that tactical thinking. You also have room for the dumbasses like me that just like the shiny explosions and both are viable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I, I think Veilguard will be the most different from the gameplay standpoint. That doesn't have to be a bad thing. I, I hope there's a moment where I am just really having a lot of fun with the Veilguard gameplay and have to admit to myself how much I love it. <laughs> I hope that's what happens. It may not. And that's fine if that's the case, but um, you know, some, I, some of those games are really fun to play. I have like a lot of people that I played with had that moment. I know Katie, what about you? Again, I'm sitting here freaking out that Solus got his ass trapped in the fade. My brain wasn't <laughs> there. My brain wasn't there. I forgot to change my equipment. Like a uh, too many levels in. I wasn't thinking about, I was taking in the sights. Oh God, I'm getting attacked. Uh, I'm playing a controller, by the way. I play PC normally. Oh, God, what's the attack button? I didn't know <laughs> what I was doing. <laughs> you, anyone who watches me stream go, mm, yeah, that was a bad match. For me. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't working out. They're, 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 uh, if you see all the screenshots, it um, they keep like, showing off like what the HUD looks like. We're like, okay, here's where you tell your companions to just choose with ability. I could never fucking remember what button it was on the controller. I played half the game. I didn't even use it. And I needed to. I was struggling. Let me tell you. I, I just... The left trigger or whatever. I don't even remember if it was the right. One of the oh. triggers. I just always forget that there's two now on controllers. I don't know. <laughs> I play Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> That's where, where to place the couch is the most intense I get on the controller. <laughs> People in the stream say that was a bad match for you. <laughs> Katie Katie fights bad guys in Dragon Age like Joe Biden does political debates. <laughs> I had, he had a bad night. He had a, I'll cut it out. It's fine. Whatever. No, that was great. That's exactly what happened. No, I go, yeah, there's an ogre coming up to me. Uh, I'm uh, so, um, uh, fuck. Oh, that's a dodge. Uh, <laughs> 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 anyway <laughs> anyway thank you <laughs> oh god okay all right um anything else from the article from game informer that jumped out at you that we should cover uh so there well there's a ton of different articles i pulled them all up okay let's see um there's gonna be a transmog system i don't know if they're going to like call it the transmogrification system but essentially like if you um if you play Final Fantasy XIV, uh, it's the glamour system where, you, well, maybe not that exact system because it's a bit wonky, but uh, essentially like if you have an armor that has really good stats and you have an armor that you actually want to wear, you can put the look of it on the one with the good stats. So you can have all the fashion you want, but actually wear some decent armor. <clears throat> Transmog should be in most games, um, and I love it. And also, um, uh, for a Bioware comparison, uh, Transmog has been in Star Wars The Old Republic for probably a couple of years now. They didn't have it at launch, and when they added it, everyone was very happy. Yes, I, I'm i excited for it. I, Lord knows I have made bad decisions for armor just to look good. <laughs> Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Um, they also talked about the character creator, the character creator. There's just a bunch of stuff. I'm, I genuinely do not know if this is the case, but I'm so hoping they they, they do a character creator demo. I I want to play with it so bad. I want people to see it. I want to see it in the finished form. I, I do too. I'm excited for this. One of the things that that you and I have mentioned on the show, lots of people have talked about wanting this, but like the fact that they're going to have different lighting and different like ways to yeah. look at the character in the character creator. I was so happy to see that in there. Cause I just, we have needed that for so long in Bioware games. Yes, I agree. Um, I'm looking through all the articles or anything else. Not really. Um, there was, there's been a lot of stuff said on like discord and blue sky and a couple other places, but it, it's all like really, for the most part, minor, or it's already been said, or it's like little character things, like Lucanus is a short king. Congratulations. 
Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was it, like little silly stuff like that, you know. Um, People are developing favorites already. Oh God, em- Emric is suddenly become a fan favorite. Hey, I, I, I'm I'm all for that. He was my favorite, but like, yeah, it's it's funny to see. People already coming up with like head cannons and drawing art stuff, and like y- y'all haven't even met half of them yet. You know, <laughs> it's it's really cute. Um, there was there's one thing I wanted to loop around with because uh there were okay so it's it's the reveal week, and uh, when we were playing the game, we were told, "Hey, there's photo mode," and we're like, "Sick!" Uh, cut to a year later, it's reveal week. There is an article comes out that says, "Hey, there's photo mode." sick so i tell all of you hey there's photo mode we all go sick uh at the q a <laughs> like a couple of days later uh they kind of they softly walked back that a little bit we're like uh... well we're we're working on photo mode and i'm like okay hold on. one i feel bad like i didn't like i don't mean to promise things that they that isn't there we like i just saw an article that was like oh they've confirmed it great okay well, i heard that too let me confirm i guess they're they just want to like tamper expectations i genuinely don't even know so uh yeah hopefully it's in there hopefully it's all good hopefully nothing broke um i i at least know it's something they want to do so there you go (laughs) well we all want it very much look at what else can we say yes at at the very least because this is still on frostbite i imagine we're able to get um uh fly cam working and that could probably do a lot of what photo mode does uh, for the PC players, uh, if you're on console, God bless you. But um, if there's a will, there's a way. Yes. Uh, let's see what else has been coming out. Yeah, I don't know. Like that's that's kind of been it. We um, oh uh, yeah. Then there were the next date to look out for stuff. Um, where did I I put this somewhere? So on July first, um, fandom. It's called Fandom. Uh, I, I guess I'm not quite clear on what they are. What does their Twitter bio say? Um, it looks like it owns... It's a company that owns a bunch of different things, like all the wikis for, for fandom stuff, GameSpot, Metacritic, TV Guide, Screen Junkies, and Giant Bomb. I don't know. But they're having some sort of like con, con stuff with um, San Diego Comic Con and like that same weekend. So uh, this, specifically, this is July 25th. Um, they're celebrating their like 20th thing of being a company. And, uh, I guess it's being presented by Dragon Age Veilguard. And, uh, in the, uh, link where it talks about what's going on, they're going to have some sort of Dragon Age themed scavenger hunt leading to a custom photo booth, 360 degree red carpet social cam. There's giveaways, a graphic novel expedition from... Z2 and an AR experience and collectible pin from partner Pinfinity. Um, I, I'm not going to San Diego Comic Con. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if you're down there, please tell us what's what's it like. What is this Dragon, Dragon Age theme or a theme scavenger hunt leading to a custom photo booth? What's the custom photo booth? What's that about? What's in Interesting. there? Interesting. Yeah, yeah, so I'm a little curious of what that is. And like, there's some people hyping up that, oh, maybe we'll hear maybe the next you know, thing will happen, you know, cause we're all kind of just waiting. Like what's, when are we going to hear more? When are we going to hear more? Um, I genuinely don't know. Um, nobody knows. And this is like the next big date that we have. It's uh, July 25th is the next time that something dragon age happens. So we're all just hoping we'll get something before or during then what it is. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, and we're kind of still just in like a holding pattern, waiting for a release date and any other major new stuff. So. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's it's um, it's exciting times, um, even if we are in a bit of a holding pattern for the very short term, at least um, the amount of information that we've been getting over the past month or few weeks has mm-hmm. just been uh, way more than what we've been used to over the last few years. And yeah. I mean, at least for me, it's weird because I hadn't gone back to the core Dragon Age games, especially unmodded for a long time. I, honestly, the thing that's getting me more excited than anything is just playing Inquisition because this game does feel like an extension of Inquisition. I think it's going to be mm-hmm. very different in scope um, as far as the breadth of it. But um, we should not forget how good Dragon Age was the last time there was a Dragon Age game. I will say it probably feels 
the most sequel-ish compared to the other Dragon Ages. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's just because like the the Origins to two, two kind of felt like a spinoff because you 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 were from Loathing, Lo- Lothering, and you kind of came from there, and it kind of like just did its own thing. Two to Inquisition, like obviously the Inquisition box was a, was like the big bad in like a DLC to two, so it kind of came mm-hmm. out of nowhere unless you played the DLC. Um, whereas, yeah, even if you did not play the DLC for Inquisition, at the very least, you got the stinger where you found out Solus was Fenharel. So you kind of know a little bit. You, you, right. everybody who played the game and at least didn't snooze through the credits got that much. Um, so it it feels the most connected of the sequels. Yeah, I think. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. Um, all right. Well, I, I think we have covered the Game Informer article and the next the next date to be excited for. Um, I think we're done. Where I, can the folks find so. you? <laughs> Uh, you can find me at Guild of Thon right now. Uh, if you're there for deep lore, I'm sorry. We're turning out stuff for noobs right now. <laughs> um. Hey, great job, by the way. I think those are great for noobs. That's great. I love those new videos. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I've been, this this whole summer up until release is just me constantly working on stuff that I'll never do again, probably. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you like this format, I'm so sorry. You got like a couple months. <laughs> you can say goodbye and we're going back to the old way because that's what I actually enjoy doing. Anyway, but um, yeah, with that, uh, that's about it. Where can they find you, Jordan? Where mystical realm can they talk? <sighs> yeah, nowhere on the internet. Somewhere in Texas, roaming the lands. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what did, what did uh, you pl- describe yourself as? You said uh, you said you were funny looking at one point, like Kylo Ren or something like that. I remember you <laughs> saying. I don't. That. Oh, you're trying to you're trying to help people identify me visually. Yeah, yeah. No, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> let's keep. Let's make sure they can't do that. That's the last <laughs> thing I want. I, I okay. I'm not going to say it. Um, they can't find me anywhere on the internet, uh, but uh, they can find me playing Dragon Age Inquisition. It's a great game. There folks. you go. You find him in Thetis. If you see a guy yeah. saying that his name is Exalted March somewhere in Thetis, there you go. You found him. <laughs> and with that, Darth Shirali. <laughs>